Ali Sabin Saleh Alawi. Welcome to WPC TV, your uh, ambassador at large, a roving ambassador for His Majesty the King of Morocco. Morocco, fortunately, I suppose, escaped the Arab Spring. The Arab Spring started, what, 2011? Um, and yet it's caused huge turmoil in the Arab world. What do you think will eventually transpire from the Arab Spring? Well, unfortunately, first of all, I don't think that the, uh, the expression Arab Spring is appropriate. On the contrary, we have been talking about Arab winter. Indeed. And even a very, very weird, and, and people have woken up with a hangover. Because ultimately what happened is that while it was the youth who really um, were the engine of the Arab revolts, it benefited actually through the election process to very conservative forces, and namely the Islamist parties across, across the Arab world. Thank God, you know, in Morocco we had two assets. First of all, a determined leadership by His Majesty, who had anticipated the reforms. And it is thanks, probably, to the reforms that have been applied much before, whether be it political, in human rights, economic transformation of infrastructure, trying to give to the populations a better life and more stakes in their own societies, which is really, to my mind, the key to durable security and a better life. We are not there, of course. The challenges are huge. But still, it allowed us to go smoothly. This was the first uh, reason. The second reason is the very, very quick answer of His Majesty. Because the amendment of the Constitution was under preparation mm -hmm. to make for regionalization and closer uh, governance yeah. with the populations. And then it was speeded up to answer to the claims of the youth and make it more open, more protective of human rights, of all the trends of accountability, of governance, and so forth. Reform of justice, well, all the uh, very heavy reforms that we want to go through and which are still actually being implemented. And this allowed us, you know, to go smoothly. The third element that we really should not lose from mind is that Morocco was blessed, first of all, to have a multi-party system. Yes. And among these parties, we had one party justice of development, which could not call itself an Islamist, but it was the trend and it has been allowed to, under a different name, to be part of the political uh, game. Mr. Ben Khiran. Mr. Ben Khiran, PJD, and it was absorbed by uh, Mr. Dr. Khatib already in 1998. And it started to have MPs to send people to the uh, parliament. So, of course, they had absolutely no experience how to handle public affairs and public policies. But, however, they have learned a lot because they have been extremely regular in the parliament. And they have really increased their influence and then power because they were delivering and because they are very present, as you know, as all on the charity scene and be there where there are failures of the state or the capacity of the state to attend the social claims of poor populations and so forth. So these three assets seems to me have helped Morocco go through these upheavals. But afterwards, what's interesting is that His Majesty went on, you know, trying to implement, you know, the Constitution, and now he's already advocating for a, an alternative model of development, which would be more inclusive mm -hmm. of the youth. As you know, this is the fragility of the whole region. Absolutely, yeah. The youth and employment, because they become easy prey for traffickers it in, absolutely, and for Algeria, radicalization. Egypt, etc. And that's why, you know, Morocco security strategy, and if you're interested, I, I could give you the link, Springer, I just published a long article on that, Morocco security strategy, how to prevent terrorism and counter extremism. It's really an academic paper, but I, I hope it'd be of interest to you. I'll give you the link. And that's why, you know, Morocco has this comprehensive approach to uh, security. Because if you do not settle the problem of security, you cannot implement better life for everybody and development. Absolutely. Look what's happening in Tunisia and Libya. Yeah. 
Security is the priority and it prevents you from taking care. Absolutely. Libya is really a failed state. Proving that's a real, real problem. So that's why I think that Morocco progressively, you know, has been through because it has this really blessed asset, which is leadership. And I think it is really missing in the region. Aisha bin Saleh Alawi, thank you very much indeed. And uh, Hamid, inshallah, everything will be fine for Morocco. I hope so. We do hope. Thank you very much. Thank you.